In Escape from Tarkov, there are few tasks which require as immediate attention as the Tarkov shooter tasks. The main reason being how much more difficult Tarkov Shooter Part 3 becomes after the average protection level of armor among the majority of the player base begins to creep up. For this reason, it's fairly important to get Parts 1 and 2 done as soon as possible so that you can get Part 3 out of the way while it's still relatively easy. With this Tarkov Shooter Part 1 guide, hopefully you'll have the first part of this task chain done in no time. To complete Tarkov Shooter Part 1, Jaeger wants us to kill 5 scavs further than 40 meters away but using a bolt action with no scope, just iron sights. Before we get into which maps are best for this, let's talk about your weapon selection. It's pretty limited at level 1 traders, but in my opinion there's generally one clear winner here with a few exceptions. If it's still very early in the wipe, the Gornaste should be your preferred weapon. The main reason would be it's one of the only weapons you can purchase a suppressor for at level 1 traders. This will allow you to move about the map without broadcasting your rotation direction or position to every other player on the map. I also recommend taking the rail off as I feel like I get a clearer sight picture without the Picatinny rail on top, but that's just personal preference, leave it on if you don't like that. I also run a backup SMG and this is typically an MP5 at this stage, usually because we're trying to increase spending with Peacekeeper whenever we can, but really any high rate of fire SMG will work for the CQC. And that's really only if you feel like you need to use a backup weapon. If you click heads really well, it might be rubles that you just don't need to spend. That's personal playstyle preference. You might be thinking to yourself, well, why not use a Mosin? It's better ammo, right? Well, that depends. And this is one of the exceptions we mentioned. If you've looted some FMJ or T45 from a scav for the Mosin, then yes, it is worth considering using as your replacement since you won't have to worry as much about scavs or players with class 3 or higher armor laughing off off your thorax shots. However, the only rounds you can purchase as of 0.14.9 at level 1 traders for this caliber are SP and HPBT, and really SP is the only viable round to use here. When we look at SPBT, it performs nearly identically to the 366 FMJ, which is what you'd be using in the Gornaste. The two differences being a slightly better chance to penetrate class 3 armor and its velocity is slightly higher. Those two things are good, but in my opinion they don't outweigh the ability to move stealthily about the map, especially when you're not using an optic on what generally ends up being a mid to long range map. This of course is a difference small enough to where if you prefer the Mosin, you should probably stick to that. But in my opinion, early wipe having a suppressor is very powerful because not too many people are expecting that. In terms of other gear, I always recommend a lower profile bag for woods like a Burkut since it makes you slightly harder to spot from various angles and really the only other thing to consider is armor. Obviously this is going to be up to what you have available, but consider that you're using iron sights and you may miss a shot or two, which is is going to expose you to some follow-up shots from the scabs. You might want to skip the Paca on this one and wear a class 3 or better if you've got it. Moving on to map selection, there's really only two maps which make this task easy. Those maps are Shoreline and Woods. You can certainly make an argument for customs, but the shot opportunities at the required distance are far fewer, so really only run this map if you have no other tasks on Woods or Shoreline or perhaps have a bunch of tasks on customs that synergize with doing this task. Between the two, uh, Shoreline and Woods, I do feel that Shoreline is the easier map to get it done on because it has four potential sniper spawns and roughly like 8 to 10 other scab spawn areas that can be shot at from distance, but it's unlikely that you're going to have a significant amount or any Shoreline tasks when you first get Tarkov Shooter, and for that reason, we're going to show you the Woods map. It's far more likely that you'll have other tasks here. There are perhaps 7 to 9 spawn areas which can be shot at from an acceptable distance for this task on woods if we don't count the lumber mill. In terms of the map strategy, you're going to need to plan your route based on which of those areas are accessible from your spawn, and then decide if you're staying for the second scab wave if you haven't finished your kills yet by the time you roll through the ones that make the most sense on your way towards your extract. And as I mentioned, I'm omitting the scabs in lumber mill simply because of how saturated the area can be with players and how dangerous it is to enter, considering you can be shot at from so many places outside the bowl. The scavs that spawn in here can certainly be shot at from 40 meters away, but take those shots at your own peril. 
So let's get into a few of the most common map rotations for getting Tarkov Shooter Part 1 done. Typically, if you spawn in the northern half of the map, you're somewhat unlucky and you're not going to get much done without a significant amount of travel and exposure. In this situation, it's worth considering simply taking what the map gives you, checking the nearest areas and utilizing the car extract if it's available. The scav bunker and the scav bunker camp are pretty difficult to get 40 meters of separation on for shots at these scavs, just based on the topography of the area. Area. So you can try, but you may end up dancing around for several minutes just to find you hit a 35 or 38 meter shot. Uh, the abandoned village scavs are a little easier since they can typically be seen running between the broken buildings, and they're easy to keep at a distance if you're across the lake to the south. The scav town is also fairly easy to get longer range shots on. There's multiple scavs who spawn there, and they tend to wander up and down the road, which runs north to south through the town. But be advised, this is a high traffic area due to the provision spawns, so be careful with your placement. Once you've cleared these, you'll need to decide if you want to stay and risk moving a significant distance south or utilize the car to gain scav rep and, of course, pad your stash. Both of the southern quadrants of the map have far more spawn points and also far more scavs available, so hopefully you end up down there and you can do a wide loop around the map. If you spawn in the southwest quadrant, it's worth waiting a minute or two to see if the scavs at Scav House will spawn. They aren't always there when the map loads in, especially if a player spawned near it, but there's generally at least two scavs wandering here, somewhere between ZB14 in the house and between the house and the mountain overlook. So wait around a bit and see if they pop up. Your next destination is going to be the checkpoint and you'll want to stay on the west side of the road and you can have an elevated position with a clean line of sight on pretty much the entire area from this hill with the rock on top of it. After checkpoint, you're going to want to head north to the scav bunker spawns generally. Depending on how much time has passed, by the time you get there, the second wave may have spawned. And then you move from the scav bunker to the east and the abandoned village scavs again by shooting them from south of the lake, then moving into scav town and shooting them as they cross the road. From here, again, you check the car to see if it's available, but by this time, if it's early wipe, it probably isn't there. So you'll want to move down to engage the scavs at spine. These scavs can wander all the way around the rocks and you can typically use the woods to the south on both sides of the spine, the east and the west, to get a decent shot angle, which would also be at a long enough distance. After you kill the spine scavs, you just move to the train station in the southeast corner and check for the scavs around the rocks as well as near the station itself. And at that point, you would probably extract, unless you have maybe one scav left and you want to push your luck by checking the medical camp or the RUAF extract scavs. For the southeast quadrant, really all you're doing is reversing the southwest quadrant spawns and it's probably less likely you're going to take the car here unless you actually manage to loot the scab village. So there you have it. If you follow these equipment tips and rotation recommendations, you'll get Tarkov Shooter Part 1 done in no time. Hopefully this guide helps you. If it does, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. Best of luck out there. Peace.